61A, lecture number 23, announcements. Homework 5 is due tomorrow. Tonight we'll have a homework party in 241 Cory, starting at 6.30 p.m. to help you with the homework. Midterm 2 is this Thursday at 8 p.m. We'll actually start the exam at 8.10 p.m., but please try to arrive by 8 p.m. It covers lecture content through last Wednesday. That was the lecture about efficiency and orders of growth. You're welcome to bring two two-sided sheets of handwritten notes. Normal letter-sized paper, please. And we will provide the Midterm 1 study guide, which looks like this. I've updated it just a tiny bit. There's a little section here. They used to be just a picture of a sound wave, but I found something more useful to put there. Some examples of conditional statements using true and false values. Zero is a false value, one is a true value. So zero won't print star, but one will print the star. Functions are true values, and here are some examples of and and or, even with some short-circuiting behavior. If any of those surprise you, then I'd recommend reviewing true and false values and an or. And we'll also provide the midterm 2 study guide, which includes some box and pointer diagrams, some examples of recursion, list comprehension, list and dictionary mutation, the difference between is and equals, true and false values with lists and tuples, ranges, slicing, aggregate functions, environment diagrams with non-local assignment, iter and next, generator functions, trees, objects, linked lists, some more recursion examples, and the particulars of attribute assignment. If you can learn how all that stuff works, then you'll do great on midterm two. We'll send you a seat assignment on Wednesday. We will have no lecture on Wednesday to give you some time back. We'll have no discussion section this week because we'll be grading your exam. And Friday will be a video-only lecture. It's a video of somebody else lecturing, a man named Alan Kay, who created the first object-oriented programming language and has been incredibly influential in the history of both programming languages and human-computer interaction. And he recorded a video lecture about user interaction and how to think about users that I think is just wonderful. So instead of me trying to recreate that message, I'm just going to let you watch him tell his story directly. This video has been a part of the course since before I ever started teaching it, and many students think it's the best part of the course, this one video. So even though it's a video-only lecture, I do recommend watching it as a way to unwind from the midterm and think a little bit about why we build software in the first place. Today, I'll focus on examples, mostly from previous exams, that illustrate some of the things you can do with the various tools and components we've been studying recently.